Hi everyone, this is Diane from My Pink Bathtub Knits. Today we are going to take a regular pair of knitted mittens and turn them into a pair of fox mittens. Now this is mitten pattern is not an original of mine. It is from Tin Can Knits, the world's simplest mittens, and I have linked it below in the description field. It is a great versatile mitten pattern that you can use various weights of yarn and make in various sizes. So check that out. And once you have your mittens knit, here's how you turn them into a pair of fox mittens. For this tutorial, you will be using double pointed needles, the same size needles that you use to knit your mitten. And you are going to be picking up the stitches directly from the mitten and knitting the ears. I often use a slanted needle to pick up the stitches first and then I transfer them onto my double pointed needle. And I, if I have one mitten already not done, I like to kind of gauge where I'm going to start on the beginning the very first stitch of picking up. So I would say it's down here. We're just going to pick up six stitches. And then we are going to transfer them onto our double pointed needle. And I usually just look to see if it kind of lines up with my other one. Now I am going to pick up six stitches directly behind this first needle so that you have 12 in total. And then again, you're going to slip it onto your needle. You can also just use the tip of your double pointed needle, whatever is easier for you. It does take a little bit of practice to do this. I think I only have five here. Let's look. Yeah, I only have five, so I need one more. And I will just pick it up from here. So now that you have 12 stitches in total placed over two needles, you are gonna use a third double pointed needle and attach your yarn. Now the secret to making these mittens point correctly is to always start your first stitch with the right hand side of your work facing you. So this is the right hand side of the mitten. So we're going to start right here. We're going to just leave a little bit of a tail and our first row or round because when we knit in the round it is called a round. We are just going to knit the first row of stitches that we just picked up all the way around. So the first needle, and then we're going to turn our work and do our second needle. It may be a little tight at first. This is very normal. I'm going to turn our work and knit the back stitches now. Thank you. 
I tend to knit into the back of the stitches when I pick them up as opposed to knitting from the front. So now we have our first row done and we are going to start decreasing. Again, we have the live stitches facing us on the right hand side of our mitten. Our first two stitches we are going to knit two together. And then we're going to knit to the end of this needle. So there's four stitches left that we are just doing knitting. And then we're going to turn our work. And at the back needle, we are going to knit the next four stitches. Having a heck of a time with my, hold on here. We are going to knit the next four stitches on the back of our work. And when we get to the last two stitches, we are going to slip knit pass over, SKPO. So we're going to slip this stitch onto our right hand needle without knitting it. We are going to knit the last stitch. Then we are going to take our left hand needle and we're going to pick up this slipped stitch and pass it over the knit stitch. We are going to repeat this until we have two stitches on each needle. So we're going to knit two together. And then knit the last three stitches. Going to turn our work. This tail is getting in the way, isn't it? We are going to knit from the back the first three stitches. Then we are going to slip, knit, and pass over. I'm going to turn our work back to the front and repeat, but we have less stitches, so we are going to knit two together. And then knit the last two stitches. Turning our work at the back, we are going to knit one, knit two, going to slip, knit, and pass over. You can see it's starting to create an angle. Now here is our last row for the Ears. It's that simple. We're going to knit these first two together again and then we are going to, this guy got slipped off, let me just fix him. There. We are going to knit this stitch. We are going to turn our work. Knit, slip, knit, and pass over. Now we have two stitches in the first needle, two stitches in the back. We are going to cut our yarn. We are going to take a darning needle, wool needle, and we are going to Put the first two stitches on it, pull through, gently pull, then we are going to put the back two on it and pull through.
there is our first year. We are then going to just get rid of these ends. We are going to pull Just going to be hiding these inside the actual ear because it is double layered. And just snip it. We are now going to pick up six stitches on the other side, but we are going to turn our work and again, we are going to work with this being the front of our work, the right hand side of the mitten. To line it up, I usually just take my needle, go straight across to kind of get a gauge of where I need to start picking up my stitches. And again, we are going to pick up six on the back row. Once we have picked up six stitches in the front and the back, and we are working with our work with these live stitches on the right hand side of our mitten, we will again do the exact same thing that we did with the other mitten. So we're going to knit the first row. And this time I am going to go a little to the side. I'm going to write it out as we go. We're going to knit around the, to the first row, knit every stitch that you've picked up. Turn your work and you're going to knit back the way you came there. It's a little hint about these mittens, uh, these ears for these mittens can ask, be used for other animals. For example, kittens. These are the exact same ears that I use when I make my kitten mittens. So pretty versatile and you can kind of have some fun with them and make other animals as well. Again, our work is on the right hand side. We are going to knit the first two stitches together knit two together, knit to the end of this needle. Turn your work. Knit the next four stitches. Yeah kind of goes off the tip rather easily. One, two, three, four. Going to slip, knit, and pass over. You are gonna repeat this, knit two together, knit to the end of the row, on the back needle, knit to the last two stitches, and then slip, knit, pass over. And then I will show you how to decorate the rest of the fox. Fortunately, my camera turned off when I was just closing up this first ear. So I'm going to show you again. I just have a wool needle that I have put my tail through. I'm going to take the first two stitches off the needle and pull. Then we're going to turn it and do the last two stitches and gently pull it closed. 
Then we are going to hide our two tails into our mitten. So I'm just gonna go from the front to the back here and thread this tail at the bottom in. Because you've knit in the front in the back, there is space to hide these tails. Just kind of stick it through, make sure it's not sticking on the outside and securely pull it through and snip the excess. Same with the top. Just going to pull it through to the bottom there. Snugly pull it through and snip the excess. So let's make sure that we are working on the correct side now for these mittens. You want them to line up so that they are the faces on the outside with the thumbs. So this would be the front of our mitten and we want to duplicate this face. Now I like putting a little bit of white yarn in here just to add a little bit of more character to the fox. You can leave it plain if you so desire, but this is how I do the ear. Just take a little piece of scrap yarn. This is actually a bit thinner. This is a four weight yarn. I'm using a three weight uh, yarn for the details. You can use the same thickness. So we're just going to put a little piece on our darning needle. We are going to go along the edge at the bottom of the mitten and just pull it through, leaving some on the other side here. You want to look at the back of your work and make sure that you don't have it poking out on this side. And we are just going to simply darn some of this through to add a little bit of interest. I'm going to push it all the way through into the mitten for this last part because I want to secure it on the inside so this does not fall out or come apart I should say. So we're just going to make sure that our needle is not poking through on the other side. And we're going to pull this all the way into the inside of the mitten. Now this last piece, we're going to go up here and then pull it into the inside of the mitten as well. And push it down there. It's so hard when you're working with these little teeny mittens to get inside with an adult size hand. There is that. Now we're going to go inside out. We have two pieces here left. And I essentially just tie it with a double knot to secure it and then trim it. Uh, at one time I used to just kind of weave it into the mitten, but I feel like if you knot it, it, it will not come apart with wear. Do it three times. and then just trim the excess. Now that we have the ears complete, we are going to knit this snout. Now I put buttons on my mittens, but you could also just hand stitch in the nose and the eyes. Uh, it's your decision. It is, I find it very challenging to get your hand in a smaller size mitten to uh, sew on the buttons. And I have quite often sewn the back of the mitten shut while trying to um, sew the buttons onto the mitten. So it is a bit of a, a task to do, but 
in one way, uh, buttons are the bane of my existence, but also I find it really finishes off the product well. So now we're going to do this snout. So you're going to use the same yarn that you used as your in inner ear yarn, and you're going to use the two double pointed needles. And we're just going to knit a little triangle and then we're going to hand stitch this on. Now this is a bit of a thinner yarn than I did the mittens in, but you could use the same brand or thickness of yarn to do so. So we are going to leave a little bit of a tail because we need that to stitch it onto the body of the mitten. We're going to use our slip knot and we're going to cast on five stitches. You could of course do this on regular needles, but I find it quite easy to work with double pointed needles as much as possible, even if I'm not knitting in the round. Now that we have our five stitches on our needle, we are going to purl the first row. Turn our work. Now we are going to knit two together and then knit the last three stitches. Turn our work. We are going to purl two together. and purl the last two stitches. Turn our work. Knit two together. Knit one. and turn our work one last time and purl the last two stitches together. This is creating a little triangle. Going to cut our work. We're gonna leave a bit of a tail because we want to be able to stitch it onto our fox face. Grab your wool needle and just pull it through the live stitch to close it. Here is your triangle. It is a little bit thinner on this yarn that I have used because as I said, it's a smaller weight yarn than the actual mitten. And I just kind of eyeball it and then I start knitting it directly onto the mitten. Just kind of freehand it. And because it's a little thinner, I will probably be knitting like some of the holes a little closed as well. This should not happen if you use the same thickness of weight of yarn when you do it. But I, I like this thinner yarn for finishing, so I tend to use a smaller, thinner yarn when I do my finishing work on my projects. So I always go around one time just lightly kind of picking up the top of the stitch and knitting through just to kind of get the base of it in place. And then I take the excess and I go around and kind of baste it just to give it a nicer finish. However it works for you, I am by no means a professional sewer or embroiderer when it comes to this. I just kind of work on it until I feel like the edge and the finish looks nice. And 
I am happy with it. Every face tends to look a little different when I do mittens. That is kind of the beauty of handmade. No two mittens are, ex or no two sets of mittens are exactly alike, and I kind of like that. Sometimes they have a little bit more character to them than other times. I know it doesn't look like it, but it is taking shape now. Now that we have done our snout, the final step is adding the buttons. Now, I you don't have to have that perfect of a corner on any of these because you're going to be literally placing your buttons on either side and at the bottom, which does make it look a lot bigger once you do that. And it brings it to life. Now, I am not going to subject you with me sewing on buttons because... This will not be a PG rated show at this point. I will be swearing because I do get frustrated and end up generally, as I said, sewing the mitten closed. So it does take a little bit of patience. Here you go. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make a pair of fox mittens. If you do not want to use buttons, you can of course just embroider uh, with some little black yarn, some the three corners to finish off the project. I hope you enjoyed learning how to turn a regular pair of mittens into fox mittens. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share this video if you think there's someone out there that you know that will enjoy it. And until next time, keep on knitting friends. Bye for now.